Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, <clears throat> this is the Digital Asset Investor and we're going to start you off on this video with um, uh, something that Heo Seiko Carmona sent me. This is from James Philan. Um, he's expounding on this whole thing with um, the SEC Director, ex-director William Henman. Uh, one of five, what a convoluted contradictory motion to quash. First, Hinman gives a pass to Ethereum in what is arguably the most impactful speech on digital currencies at the time as well as in Hinman's career at the SEC. Second, the SEC says Hinman held a position of critical importance to the SEC's operations. Third, the SEC then says Director Hinman has no unique first-hand knowledge of market participants, understanding as to uh, the regulatory status of XRP officer, offers and sales. Fourth, the SEC shows its weakness, saying the court should, should quash the subpoena without prejudice until after Judge Torres' ruling on the SEC's motion to strike Ripple's fair notice defense. Finally, Hinman finishes it and his credibility off with a declaration that, to the best of my knowledge, the commission had not taken at that time and still has not taken any position or expressed a view as to whether offers and sales of ether constituted officer offers and sales of securities. I expect that Ripple and the individual defendants are going to absolutely shred this in their response to the SEC's motion. My comment on this, one of the things that I have always thought is shameful. Why would you send Bill Hinman to give a speech, to give his own quote opinion this is, they always come out and they say, well, this is not the opinion of the SEC. Well, the question is, if it's not the opinion of SEC, then why is the SEC director going out there and planning this seed that Ethereum is not a security to the public? That's where the, the smoke is. What was the purpose of that speech? What's the purpose of that speech if he's not, I mean, he's working for the SEC, so what is he going out and giving speeches for just to, to float this idea that Ethereum as well as Bitcoin are not securities? What's the purpose of that speech? Why? Who sent him out there to give that speech? Who did he talk to before he gave that speech? Did he talk to Jay Clayton? Did Jay Clayton approve him giving that speech? Because if Jay Clayton approved him giving that speech, then, then at what point is it really actually the official position of the SEC and not as they like to say, oh, this is not the official. The, 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 I smell so much BS in all of this, it's not even funny. And I think everybody else does too. Now they're in real trouble because the official cool guy of the Digital Asset Investor channel has weighed in on this now too. Now you might be able to, you might be able to say what the what the digital asset investor um, says is I shouldn't put a video out of Hinman say in his own words. You might you can say all kinds of things about me or about people in X in the proponents, quote proponents of XRP. But it's real tough to go after someone as cool as the official cool guy of the digital asset investor channel. So here he is. Second on the list, we got to talk about those digital assets. Coinbase giving you the head fake, telling you Doge and Quan are listed. Quan ain't bad, but don't chase those green candles. On to that Ripple case. Big moves for Ripple, baby. The judge told the SEC the second or third time to turn over the documents about their internal trading practices. They didn't want to do it. Why is that? Now Ripple wants to depose the ex-employee Hinman. And the SEC is opposing that motion. They're trying to squash that subpoena. Why? Why can't we ask him questions? He stated that Ethereum doesn't look like a security. Meanwhile, the SEC just said, Hinman never said that, that was his opinion. Pretty sure I saw that guy testifying in front of Congress. They also said that it's not fair, social media are making these guys out to be bad guys. We're just playing past videos. Those are facts. We're not spreading anything. Those are trumers. They ain't real. <laughs> Those are rumors. They ain't rumors. 
only the, the official cool guy of the Digital Asset Investor channel could come up with something like Trumers. I love it. Okay, now, in a twist, this, on, on, this morning on C, I think this was this morning, on CNBC, Katie Hahn, who we've talked about, remember in the, in the video before this one, I showed you that she's on the board at, at uh, Andres and Horowitz, and now William Hinman has joined that same board, and she did, was part of the people, she was one of the people that did the write-up, and she's also the person with the U.S. Department of Justice from 2015 that signed off on the Ripple settlement with FinCEN, where they find Ripple 700,000 and called XRP a virtual currency. She is also the woman who teaches a blockchain course at Stanford with who? Wait for it. Why am I drawing a blank on her name? Susan Athey. Susan Athey, she teaches a course with at Stanford. Why does Susan Athey matter? Why does Susan Athey matter? That's because Susan Athey is on the board at Ripple. Is, is all the world a stage, folks? All right. Now, don't forget PolySign because PolySign is one of the most important factors in all of blockchain, but we can't say it loud because it's the most secretive project in blockchain. We can't really talk about it much. You don't hear anything about it, but we do know that people that started the XRP ledger, Joel Katz, David Schwartz, and Arthur Brito, who we've never seen a picture of, were some of the guys that started PolySign. Okay, so now Standard Custody, which is a subsidiary of PolySign, is um, all of a sudden getting activated. Meet our all-star team. First up, CEO Jack McDonald. Jack is a longtime expert in traditional finance and brings deep experience, expertise, and proven leadership. Then, I didn't even know he had a Twitter handle, but Jack McDonald tweets this out. I had a great conversation with my longtime friend, Jeff Solomon. Um, this is Jenny. Uh, she's from Bloomberg. Yeah. Partnership uh, about Standard Custody's partnership with Cowan. I couldn't read this article because I'm not a subscriber to Bloomberg. But uh, at the same time, it was an interesting tweet that comes out. Rosie Rios, who's on the board at Ripple, life happens in a whisper, a poly sign whisper. Find your voice and use it wisely. That's what we're doing, Rosie. We're trying to. Jamie Nix, I think is how you say his name. He wanted to point out to us here, talk about adoption. Crypto.com is on literally advertising on the floor of one of these ice hockey events. Cool stuff. Elon Musk decided he was going to tweak social media. How many Bitcoin maxis does it take to screw in a light bulb? This guy's, I mean, oof. They're not going to like that at all. In fact, Michael Saylor says, if you give us 10 minutes, maybe we can hash out the answer. Actually, if, if the network is congested, it might take three hours to screw in that light bulb, which is why it's a great question from Elon Musk. Ian Northing sent me a clip from the late, great John McAfee about Bitcoin. Now, many of you may not remember this, but for a long time, John McAfee talked about Bitcoin like he loved it. And then he did an about face one time, and he came out and told the truth about Bitcoin. And remember, a lot of people out there think this guy was eccentric, crazy, whatever. But I don't, I've never heard anybody accuse him of being stupid. He is schooling someone. This is a guy who apparently is a Bitcoin maxi. And let me tell you what, and listen, if you got kids... There's a lot of language in this one, so plug their ears or tell them to go out of the room. We'll do a moment of silence for about three seconds while you get them out of the room. Hurry. One, two, three. Here we go. Worth as much as it was originally because it was used as a fucking currency. Nobody will use Bitcoin anymore. It's old, clunky, slow, expensive with zero privacy. Nobody uses it. It's a piece of shit that the world <laughs> has not understood yet. So, John, just to play devil's advocate, because I, I want to I hear your thoughts on this. I mean, there's a lot of ways that they're adding, they're trying to add more privacy features to Bitcoin, right? <laughs> Are you shitting me? Are you shitting me? Yes. Like, there's a lot, there's a lot you can add to a Model T Ford to make it a fucking space rocket. Good God, wake up, my friend. 
No, it's stupid. Fucking st- please, please, God. You you look like a, a man with a brain. You know better than this. You fucking yeah, just, know better. John, I, I agree with you on, on the need for privacy. I just, I mean, it's just not a reality. Not just privacy. Not right just now. privacy. Show me how the fuck you put a smart contract on the Bitcoin blockchain. Impossible. Well, what oh, yeah, use is the goddamn happen. blockchain that has a smart contract? Everybody has a smart contract except Bitcoin. What about a distributed oh, no, I mean, application? Yeah. No, you can't gonna, put no, depths. You can't put depths on a. Please, God, please wake the fuck up. If you actually believe Bitcoin is worth more than five cents, then please explain that to me. So, so John, where is the money going to flow, though? I mean, why why are people buying Bitcoin today if it's not because they're stupid? They don't understand the blockchain. That's why they don't understand cryptocurrency. That's why. (laughs) Please wake up, people. Please, God. So this reply right here caught my attention. You're being pretty anti-Bitcoin lately. It's not helping. Not a good idea to to imitate toxic BTC maximalism under a different name. No, you're wrong. If there is no use case, if there's no utility, there's no value. The only reason Bitcoin has value right now is because there's a Bitcoin marketing machine. There's a lot of wealthy people who have a cost basis in Bitcoin that is probably so low that they feel a need that they have to continue the marketing program and not back off of it. That does not mean that I'm going to sit here and lie to you about what Bitcoin is and what is not. It it is not like the Bitcoin marketing program does. I'm not going to sit here and I'm going to, I'll tell you exactly what Bitcoin is. Bitcoin was the first through the door. I give it all credit for that. Okay. Bitcoin is never going to be, have a real use case unless they put it on the ledger or maybe through Flare or an F Bitcoin, then, then it can be different things. But Bitcoin itself is not everything that they've tried to sell it to be. And it's got all kinds of problems. And it, you, just like, just like uh, they, they make, he, I think he made comparison to the Model T, you're not going to, I don't remember any time in my life where the first thing out, in fact, I always wait when there's a new iPhone out. I don't ever buy the new iPhone. I always wait until it's been out for a while before I buy it. There's all kinds of problems with Bitcoin. I don't try to ignore those. And the other thing that people say out here is, oh, you you know, uh, if it's good for Bitcoin, it's good for crypto. And that's just, they only say that because to this point, everything has followed Bitcoin. But I don't believe that that's how this story ends. At some point, the use cases are going to kick in on these digital assets. And with that, when that happens, Bitcoin is going to be left behind. And that's when the people like me who have been telling you the truth about all of this, we'll, we'll just, I'll, I will be very humble about it. And I'll say, okay, see, there you go. Um, I'll try my best not to do the I told you so, but sometimes it's, all, it's tempting. But... Okay, now I showed you this yesterday. I want to show you the first part of it again It's because it's this important. Everybody that's listening to me out there, if you are able to get any kind of a tax advantage account, which is what I trust capital is, one of my sponsors, like I did, or if you're able to open a Roth IRA or any kind of IRA or roll a 401k you've got into an IRA, if you're buying crypto and you can do it through, through a tax advantaged means, that's the way to go. You got to hear this because this is everything right here. What we're talking about with crypto is the entire, this is a one to 200 year thing where there's going to be a changeover to a new financial system. And even though you may not make $5 billion, you stand to make a ton of money. And if you have it in a tax advantaged account, like, like an iTrust Capital account, that is everything. Listen. A ProPublica article, a new one. Published this morning, highlighting how tech mogul Peter Thiel turned a Roth IRA account into a $5 billion tax-free piggy bank. Robert Frank uh, joins us now with more. Um, I mean, well, let's talk about it, Robert. What a brilliant move right at the outset to see that this could be done and how it paid off. It's really an outlier, but there's quite a few of these guys that got a couple of hundred million not five billion, but they've grown these things to a couple of hundred million. Yeah, I mean, Warren Buffett, Bob Mercer, both of them have tens of millions in these accounts. 
Let's just go back and explain what this article, this is, as you mentioned, the second in this series of articles from ProPublica looking at the how the wealthy use loopholes in the tax system to lower their income taxes. This article says that billionaire Peter Thiel used a Roth IRA to shelter billions from taxes. The report saying Thiel grew his IRA from $1,700 in 1999 to $5 billion in I rest my case. I trust capital.com. I've got links in the description of this video. I, I have two accounts there myself. I highly recommend you check them out. I know the guys over there. This, this is one of my favorite companies in crypto, and I think they will be the rock stars in the future of crypto. Um, if I was a, a major investment company, I'd be staring straight at them right now as an investment. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family about iTrust Cash.